This is Goku Sun DBZ, and welcome back for a new video. Now, this is just a quick little wrap up. Just got done watching the Microsoft show for E3 2019. A few thoughts on a few of the gameplays I saw quickly, and they all get ready to cut up. Um, got to see a bunch of new indie games coming out, which I'm curious to check out some of them. Uh, but more on some of, I think, the more standout elements to it. We got to see, of course, the first Pro Quo stuff on the new upcoming Xbox. With that said, or more specifically, we got to hear about it. Not really see. But then we got to see gameplay a little bit more of, of course, things from, like, Borderlands 3. Also, some new, like, DLC additions that you get if you pre-order. Also, we got to see trailers and info on the new upcoming Gears of War 5 game. As well as if you pre-order, apparently you'll be able to play sort of like as a skeleton or whatever like Terminator from the Terminator franchise interesting idea for a pre-order bonus in order to get more people to obviously pre-order the stuff good attempt given more and more people aren't really pre-ordering as much nowadays as it used to be but with that said I will say some of the standouts to me personally, of course at the end we get to see a little bit of a story teaser trailer of sorts for the new upcoming Halo game, Halo Infinite. And yeah, it's not going to be released on current gen, unfortunately. It's going to be a launch title for Xbox, or as they're just calling it right now, Project Scarlet. Okay, Project Scarlet. Interesting. I was wondering if it was going to be Xbox 2, Xbox 720, whatever the hell you want to call it. Sure, whatever, Microsoft. But, I'd say a little bit more aspect on some of the stuff that really caught my attention is definitely some of the indie games really caught my attention. Of course, a pretty big announcement is the announcement that they are consolidating uh, one they're adding Xbox whatever you know the Xbox game store whatever streaming service they have Xplay and stuff already they're adding it to PC so for PC gamers that's a pretty big deal We'll see announced some pretty decent sized titles that are going to be launched with the PC version, which is supposed to be this week. Plus, he announced they are consolidating into one price Xbox Game Pass, along with also Xbox Gold, double pack together. So instead of paying like $9, like $10 here, $10 here, whatever, combined, $14.99 is the price per month for the service. So that's going to give you, of course, obviously, Xbox Gold perks, as well as many other things. I mean, plus the amount, the hundreds of games in the library already. And that includes, by the way, of course, they have Xbox One, Xbox 360, and original Xbox games in the actual store of games to stream. They also announced an interesting expansion for uh, Forza Horizon 4, a LEGO expansion. Interesting, adding LEGO to Forza. Why not, I guess. Um, now I'm going to talk about two or three specific highlight things that caught my attention most out of the press conference from Microsoft. And that being specifically, I would say, first up of the particular things that caught my attention was, of course, one, the announcement, or rather, getting a little more details and stuff, obviously, on Ori Will the Wisps, which unfortunately is now apparently like February 2020, which sucks. 
but still got to see a little bit more and it kind of looks like the way they're setting up like a lot of big bosses and stuff on the stages harkens and gives you a little bit of like a Dark Souls type feel to it with him chasing, though it's obviously not going to play anything like Dark Souls. But now are coming up are I think the three games that caught my attention the most. First up, in third of the games that caught my attention the most was the announcement. Well, actually, no four games. But first, in third slot, I think that caught my attention was the announcement of a LEGO Star Wars special new box set coming next year. It's going to entail stories from all nine episodic movies. They're calling it Star Wars LEGO's Skywalker Saga. So you will have the stories and games of all three of the prequels, which I love. You will have the original Star Wars trilogy. You will also have Star War, obviously, Episode 7, Episode 8, and, apparently, Episode 9, which makes sense, since it's not going to be released until 2020, that makes sense. So, you will have story and stuff, obviously, from Rise of the Skywalker. So, that definitely caught my attention. Second place was a tie between two games that caught my attention. First was the announcement of a new Dragon Ball Z game. That was huge to me. That specifically caught my attention more than anything else. Well, except for you other things, but it's going to be a new Dragon Ball Z game. It looks like it's story-wise going to mainly revolve around the events of the anime from like seasons 1 to season 3. So basically from the very beginning of the Saiyan Saga to through the Namek Saga into obviously the Frieza Saga. Because there was a lot of elements of showing battles with uh, Goku fighting Nappa, Vegeta, and then skipping basically to Frieza. But that really caught my attention. It really looks like it's going to be a real heavy story, obviously, aspect. Definitely more going to be for the old school fans of Dragon Ball Z like myself. And many millions more out there. But it's being called Project Z. And then the bomb Kakarot. So, tied with it at the number two slot is the announcement of a new FromSoft game. And what's more interesting other than being FromSoft at first, I was thinking, look at the animation also, I was like, is this going to be Dark Souls 4? But then I'm um, like, but I thought FromSoft said no Dark Souls 4. It's a brand new title. It's a brand new IP. But what is the big deal about this that caught my attention? Not only besides being a big new game coming from FromSoft, of all companies, is the name attached to it. George R. R. Martin. In other words, the creator of Fire and Ice, Game of Thrones. This is pretty big deal, and apparently, it, you can tell in the trailer that there's going to be elements from Fire and Ice or the Ring, um, Game of Thrones universe mixed in with the animation art style of, of course, FromSoft. So you're going to have sort of like a Dark Soulsborne type, maybe ass type game, which honestly I think goes really good with George R. R. Martin. To be fair. Because he's a serial killing writer. The way he liked to kill people off in the Game of Thrones universe. Or Fire and Ice, sorry. But yeah, that was a big deal. But coming in at number one, the biggest thing I think at the conference was the announcement, Sega. But what's even bigger is the announcement, the return of a beloved game, one of the greatest games ever from one of the greatest consoles ever. A game is finally returning after the original game being released on the Sega Dreamcast and then re-released on the original Xbox and the Nintendo GameCube. This is a direct sequel. I mean, we haven't had really any think about this. I mean, it's the first sequel or whatever to this franchise. 
it's the first game in general from this franchise in years. This is a big deal to me because this is a franchise that has a special place, along with Final Fantasy. Fantasy Star is returning. The first time this game apparently being released here in the West and everything coming next year to Xbox One. And it is Fantasy Star Online 2. We're finally getting a sequel to Fantasy Star Online. It only took them over a decade and a half. It's about bloody time, but I will say I'm stoked as hell for this. I mean, seriously. This is a big deal. As an old school fan that has been a fan of the Fancy Star games since the Sega Genesis. Since Fancy Star 2 and, Final, and Fancy Star 4. Which in my opinion can rival Final Fantasy 6 in storytelling, atmosphere, and everything. And Fancy Star Online was a groundbreaking game for its time on the Dreamcast. Unfortunately, I never got a chance to play the GameCube, which is insanely expensive now. I only once on a friend's Xbox got to play the Xbox port of it, but I've wanted the chance to once again play Final Fantasy, oh, Final Fantasy Star Online because never really got to experience it since the Dreamcast. But now, finally, coming to Xbox, Fantasy Star Online 2 is coming to Xbox One. And uh, at the very least, it's going to be a timed exclusive, apparently, to Xbox, Microsoft. I'm not sure whether or not it will stay or not. I'm not sure yet, but either way, it's definitely going to be a pre-order from this person right here. As a fan of the Fantasy Star series for well over 20 years now. Which is pretty impressive. It rivals Final Fantasy as a series I've been a fan of for decade, for over two decades now. But with that said, leave a comment below. Tell me if you saw the Microsoft Press Conference as well of E3 2019, what game stood out to you and what are you most looking forward to on the Microsoft lineup? And I'll see you again soon. Same YouTube time, same YouTube channel. And I may do one of these also for Square Inks once it comes around. We'll see. See you next time.